Hello people, my name is Rage, and welcome at all to Tavern Brawl! And we now flip the coin of disappointment. It's like being handed a package, and you get told it's either your wildest dreams or a box of spiders, and you have to trebulously... Is that a word? Is trebulously a word? It sounds like a good word, but I also think I just made it up. Either way, you know where that analogy was going, Tavern Brawl! Yes, this is good! Cthulhu the Chef, Tentacle Soup, a dark recipe! Give a taste of the All Gods Fire, pick a class, and we'll give you the taste of the All Gods recipe for what that class to do a battle. Okay... Um, alright, let's go Rogue, because, you know, I like Rogue, I'm enjoying Rogues lately, I am, I'm really unleashing my inner thiefy pirate. I think sometimes it's important you dress as a pirate and run around your room privately yelling, Arr, me hearties, Arr, sexy, and then you just enjoy it. I know there was a twinge of Scotland, but really... There's a twinge of Scotland in all of them. All right, we finally found a player after like five crashes. Uh, how up that we have the old gods board, though maybe that is a uh, deliberate choice. Okay, so a very normal deck, and based on the death rattles, I assume I'm playing the Zoth Rogue. So, yeah, what I'm thinking this brawl is then is a pre built old god based deck for every class. So, it's kind of like a set crossroads old gods brawl, which is definitely interesting, but it depends how far they've gone with it, because I'm going to try Mage after, and if I don't see 28 spells and Yogg-Saron, then I'm going to be very upset. What's the 30th card, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. It was me not being able to add up to 30 with the numbers 28 and 1. I'll admit that is pretty bad. Seriously, fucking Seekel, you have four cards. Look at them. Ask yourself a question. Do I want this in my opening hand? Repeat the process four times. Jobs are good in. Trade your minions aggressively. Most of them give you an advantage when they're killed, so sacrifice away. Oh, never fucking mind then. There's actually other stuff going on. Do not fear death, hero. Your minions are useful to you both alive and dead. Keep your minions for theirs. You will eventually overwhelm them. So is this like the old god whispering to me with thoughts of, Oh, do this. You will gain the power. So is it just giving me a tip how to play this deck? Or is actually extra things going to happen? when I kill the frog, or when the frog dies here from this quick shot? And the answer is... no? Okay, I, I, okay, dial it back, it is, it is crossroads, but old god themed decks, and the old gods whisper instructions to you like they like to do, which is a nice way of adding a little bit of extra pizzazz to your average brawl, yes it is, we've got Zaryl next turn, which is good, we are of course going to scream at our opponent to BUY ONE at any given time, which is good. So Buy yeah, one. let's do that. Buy one, we'll grab ourselves uh, an arcane shot, which is actually pretty good. Two deadly poisons, not the most useful things in the world. Uh, neither is the fade leaf toxin, if I'm real, but I guess we'll probably get something out of it. Maybe just stealth the drake and keep the spell. What even is a sea kel? I'm assuming it's a rare species of fish called the elusive lesser spotted kel. But at the same time, I've never heard of it. But I wouldn't have done if it's a rare fish. So how would I know? Oh, the conundrums I am facing this day. I have so much useless crap in my hand. I mean, the double deadly poison isn't horrible, I'll admit. But still. All right. Well, Tauren and Frog. I mean, yeah, you can kill the Tauren. But then we get a 2-2 anyway. So this all should be well. I wish this slime had Tauren. Then you could at least argue it's kind of a replacement for Belcher. And that would be really nice. It would probably help the meta a lot if this was a double taunt minion. But... It's so sad. I was really excited when I saw it, because I love Taurins as a thing. I love tentacles as a thing, so you add tentacles to the Tauren, and, well, now you're talking for me, but alas, alack. Alas, alack. All right, well, we can Shadow Strike that pretty easily. I mean, the Hyenas, we can Deadly Poison and Arcane Shot, so we're finally going to get a pretty good use for our hand. What's he going to add? A Fiery Warbat? Not really a big issue, although it's going to obviously kill one of those. Sylvanas is very nice. Destroy that. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. So then we will Hero Power, Deadly Toxin, and Arcane Shot. How freaking useful is that. So, boom there. 
boom there, and then we'll get a little bit of face in. He'll obviously kill my frog, which uh, is irritating, but we still definitely have an advantage. I can kill another five health creature with my second poison. Hell, I can give this five attack damage and kill the next high main. And then we've got Sylvanas and a loot hoarder next turn. Sylvanas applies a lot of pressure. I mean, Sylvanas is Windrunner's death rattle text, may, may as well say. Sylvanas Windrunner, six mana, five, five. Your opponent misplays hard next turn. Done. I mean, it really, really might as well say that, because it's such a frustrating card, because think about it, you, you get it played against you, and you're like, oh my god, now I have to work out the perfect way to trade, that doesn't give him a thing, and, and I've got to do this, alright, so maybe start with it, oh no, that was wrong, at one point, oh fuck, I mean, maybe it's just me, maybe it should say, if your rage misplay like crazy next turn when Sylvanas is played against you, because I suck at on the spot maths, but you know what I'm saying, alright, and you know what I'm playing, and what I'm playing is Hearthstone. Hey, just in case you were like alt tabbed or something. That would be a kind of cool way to watch someone's channel. You have to open a video without looking at it and try and work out as soon as you can based on the commentary what game it is they're playing. I bet there is quite a few games that that actually would genuinely be a irritating thing to have. So we have Nazoth, which is uh, excellent here because... Uh, he is our turn 10 play, definitely. Okay, well, we'll backstab you, and then obviously lose the dog, and then preemptively put the deadly poison on, and I think that will actually do. You know what? I'm going to Briathorn Toxing this, and the reason I'm going to do that is... Uh, in fact, I'm also going to stealth it. Now, bear with me, because there is method to my madness. I'm going to guarantee that we keep a 4-1 on the board. That way I can trade it into anything he plays, and then still be able to Nazoth once I've got rid of it, thereby making a lot more impact with my turn, and not just having those cards just kind of sat there doing nothing. I mean, yeah, I could have waited for them a little bit, but at least this way he knows whatever he plays, if it's killable to the 4 damage, it's basically a waste of his time. So, I think it applies a little bit of pressure, because he also... Ma Ha! Height! Thi! Hink! That I have a plan. And I did admittedly have a plan. And now I don't. Nazoth, go! Bring me back the taunt, please. Yes, there it is. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so we should, in theory, win. I mean, if he has a way to silence the taunt and, like, kill command hit me, then obviously I'm screwed. But unless he's got a very lucky hand from this brawl, all should be well in the world. I do. Oh, man. Yep, there it is. I mean, we've still won, but that's cool to see it. I have a feeling that this brawl might force you to draw your old god. That way, it's pretty damn cool. So we have the Shadow Caster. Let's see what we would have got. And then we'll play that and see what happens, too. And then we will defeat him with the power of my own face. So much crap is happening right now. <laughs> Incredible! I like it when someone gets all into uh, the shenanigans there. Because, I mean, obviously I couldn't resist nuking the board. That was awesome. In the situation where I didn't have lethal, I wonder if I actually could have done that. I think I could. I mean, especially with a Sylvanas steal, it probably would have been fine. Oh, come on! This is just telling me to play Rogue again, but no! I will play as a wizard. Because it's going to be amazing! Like, like amazing, but like a, like a mage. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, we got I was about to be like, alright, we jump cutting here. There's no way it's happening. But no! Actually gave me an opponent. Blizzard servers, I'm proud of you. And yes, I am starting now to think that uh, you are just guaranteed to get the old gods board here. We'll keep this too, because a nice little opening hand. Uh, servant of Yogg-Saron. I'm thinking that, yes, the mage one is Yogg. So, uh, the druid one will be Asharaj. I'm gonna actually, after this, I'll go through all of them, and I'll guess which old god represents each class. Get as many spells as possible! Each one will fuel the reawakening of Yogg-Saron! I like these little whispered tips at the start. I wish they were more frequent, and I wish they were a bit more flavorsome, and that would add a little bit of spice. Use the druid's mana generating spells to summon the servants of the old gods way ahead of schedule. Okay, yeah, I'll just do that. As a druid, as a druid blizzard, as the druid I'm playing as right now, you know, me, me, the druid, Jane, or the druid here, I will definitely use my uh, mana accelerating abilities to get the servants of the old god out faster. You're right. You're totally right. God damn it. Can any brawl go smoothly? <laughs> like, seriously. Entangling roots. That's fine. Summoning his lovely, lovely trents. 
feel like he's then going to use it to damage it, so I can't really trade that effectively, which does admittedly suck, unless we draw something very, very good here, which we kind of don't, so I guess we'll just trade off and then leave it and hope that he doesn't have a good follow-up. I mean, he did use two living roots and a coin just to deal with literally one worm, so we should be in an advantageous position. We'll spell slinger it, then... Uh, Loot Hoarder and Hero Power. In fact, we've got a pretty good curve, assuming Servant of yogg -Saron doesn't completely, utterly, instantly... Oh, wow, no, it's C'Thun. I guess I'm wrong there. I wonder if they've given anyone a Yasharaj deck. I mean, they should do, because it is a very novel old god, but it also is the least buildable around old god in the game. I kind of like that we have charge here. There's a lot of potential in that. I mean, we could obviously just charge a loot hoarder and then get an immediate draw, but I feel that's just a massive waste. Although, two mana for one with charge, death rattle will draw a card. Imagine if that was a card. Oh, two of that would be played in actually every single deck in the game. I don't think there's an archetype that wouldn't enjoy having that ability. Like, that's actually insane. Okay, he started his ramping, which is fine. He's got a Paladin Secret, which does kind of suck. We'll see if it's something that's going to stop me. And draw a card. All right, Servant of Yogg-Saron, don't screw me on this! That's okay. It's an extra card. You know, everyone would play a 5-mana five 5-4 five do one damage to all the enemy minions, draw a card. That's a very good effect. So this is uh, fine. And then we can summon it next turn. We've not actually played that many spells, considering this is a yogg -Saron deck. But we do at least need to hold on till we draw yogg -Saron. What you gonna do, Tyrinx? The rare form of Tyrannosaurus Rinx. He crossed bread with a sphinx, so now as he mauls you to death, he writes riddles on the floor with his stumpy little arms that are slightly less stumpy due to the genetic crossbreeding. I do like to imagine that somewhere in the world there is someone who is a mad scientist in a lab who is totally, genuinely close to coming up with a way to clone dinosaurs. Wild growth, a bit of a late wild growth, but I guess better late than never. A druid always pays attention and does nothing ever early. All right, well, we could fireball this away plenty, or I could Azure Drake and go for the world's most baller arcane missiles. I'm not sure really which one is the best thing to do. All right, we'll do it. I don't mind uh, having myself winning three coin tosses. That's one. That's two. Oh, god damn, that sucks. But we do have the backup uh, flames from the spell damage. So we do have quite decent board advantage. Two fireballs to get rid of it. We can trade up with charge, although it's not the most efficient thing in the world. And then we can just make a really nice tempo play with Faceless Summoner. And if we do get a turn for ourselves, Cable is Tome. To be wrong, do I go for this? Or do I just use the seven damage while I have it? Oh, I should use the seven damage while I'm at it. I'm not happy about this, okay? And you are totally allowed to call me a coward in the comments, but I I need to be safe. Because we need to see yogg -Saron, of course. Like, what's even the plate of playing a yogg -Saron deck if you don't get to play a yogg -Saron? Like, even if you're winning hard, you deliberately start losing and missing lethal until you can play your old guy. I mean, it's just the way of the world. Alright, well, obviously we ping him away, and then Cable is Tome for Q, Dark Arakoa. Huh. I mean, actually... Ah, I mean, I could play that and then charge it right. And then we'll have a three-cost minion left, so that's actually okay. Ooh, that sucks, but it needs to have... Actually, it doesn't need to have charge, because we can just Frostbolt this and wait till next turn. I'm just going to do that. I think that's better than just getting rid of this Faceless Summoner. Because then if he doesn't trade here, I can just charge the Raid Leader and finish it off. It's a shame I didn't have a couple extra mana that turn. That would have been brilliant. But damn you, Cableist Dome. So much value. <laughs> but so hard to find a turn when you can safely play it. So, so difficult. Okay, cool. Crazed Worshipker. Worshipker. Yes, Crazed Worshipker. Not a big deal here. Is he going to kill the Raid Leader? Is he going to do it? That's the question. I mean, he obviously should, because now I can kill both the free sticks and the 5-4, but he doesn't know my hand, so he's thinking about just going face with the Cthune Worshipper over there, which will be his untimely demise if he does. So here's ho- Ow! Damn. <laughs> like, straight up, just damn.
Alright, well, Cableist Tome, I believe in you, because now is the time. Tell me of your secrets! Hmm. That's not horrible at all. We'll play the Faceless Summoner. I just need to risk it at this point. I need stuff on the field, uh, and I need to be able to resist if he plays anything massive. And the best way to do that is to obviously mirror entity and just copy it myself, and then polymorph his version of it. So, he is hoping... Oh, thank God. All right, we're good. We're good. And actually getting our own one is brilliant before he did three more damage to us because we really, really freaking need to get loads of stats on the board so Cthulhu doesn't just win him the game because that's the only way he can win here. I'll admit a big part of me wants to play the servant, but I can't risk it completely screwing me over here, which, let's be honest, it's like to do. So if I ping this... I could arcane explosion actually. That works really, really well here. So we'll put the duplicate on. Arcane explosion. Boom. And then we can kill that one there. Kill that one there. And we've got a, just a very nice amount of stuff on the board. I mean, again, if he plays Cthulhu, we are dead if it doesn't give us the mirror entity because it's got more than a 22 attack. So, aha, the Razor Edge. This is basically the last turn that he has to win, and it's with a Cthulhu top deck. Just please don't concede. I just want to play Yogg-Saron, and I just can't draw it. I don't even care if it loses me the game. I just want to draw it. Okay, swipe is fine there. We'll play Loot Hoarder, just cause... Uh, Hey, two more face the summoner. It's the value right there. The freaking value. Come on, Yogi boy. God damn it. All to hell. Where the crap is... Where the crap is Yogg Saron? Charge more Yogg Saron, so we'll do that just for funsies. I guess we'll charge this for funsies. But where the fuck is Yogg Saron? Like, I'm just spending this entire time, like, I just want to play this one card, see what it does, and then go home for tea. Is that so hard? And I'm already home, so I could just move straight onto the tea part of this plan. Oh, <sighs> man. I would have won by now, but I don't care. I want the fun. <sighs> I've not cast so many spells in this game to not have the fun. And then 29. Oh, it really, really would be close. Like, seriously. Seriously close. We'll cast that. Then we'll cast that. Just because it's uh, more spells. And then with this extra health on the board, we should be okay. Emphasis on should. We'd end up at, like, at what? One to two health. So then he'd hero power us down the next turn. One in seven now. I repeat, one in seven. Here we go. He drew it. He drew it. How's it gonna go? Are we done yet? Yay! Okay, that was uh, really not that disastrous when it came down to it. Alright. Give me fucking Yogg-Saron! I am trying so hard to play it this game. He knows that. He does. Oh, I don't know if he's deliberately letting me... Amber Weaver, that's fine. I guess I'll play the Servant. Obviously, he's going to poke me in the face now. And I could... Oh, he's going to kill my Faceless Summoner. Interesting. Well, now it's less of a risk for me to play the Servant of Yogg-Saron, at least. But it's okay, because I finally drew him. All right. Mana Worm's dead, so let's see what happened. Forbidden Flame. I have some mana. All right, Valen's chosen. Oh, good. Stormcrack. Oh, good. I swear to God, if after all this, he does literally nothing good. Good. All right. Hey! Oh, but he is still dead, so... So that's not good. That's my face, so I'm still dead. I guess that has to be on the Klaxi, so that's something. Hey! All right! We're alive! Yes! We're alive! Please be me. Yay! Alright, Shadow of Madness, that doesn't matter. Prep doesn't matter. Lava Burst, is that what kills him? No, it's not what kills him. I mean, obviously we'll do that. Ah, Flame Lance, that's what kills him. After all that, after all that, like this brawl, we get the world's most anticlimactic Yogg-Saron. 
I just don't even know at this point. Well, I mean, obviously, Flame Strike gives us a lot of ball control, and I just can't get over how lame that Yogg Zaron was. Just so truly, unbelievably, undeniably lame. Ain't that right, Tyrinx? Ain't that right? Oh, good. Now he gains eight health. This just isn't worth it, is it? It just isn't worth it. Really? Okay. I guess Wrath then? Alright, yep, Wrath. I didn't want to take the five damage. I suppose that's reasonable. Oh no, he's actually just drawing off it. And I guess that is also reasonable. But finally, we should be in a position where all is well now. Oh, that's enough! That's perfect lethal! Yay! God damn, we did it. <laughs> Maths, am I right? Like if you enjoyed whatever this was. And subscribe for more. <laughs> God damn. Thanks, Yogg-Saron. Really, really appreciate it. Let's go party in Karazhan. A oh, good boy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the, the, pr the predictions. All right, Warrior, Yasharaj, Shaman, Yogg-Saron, Rogue, Nazoth, as we saw. Paladin, Nazoth, Hunter, Nazoth, Druid, Cthun, Warlock... Honestly, I'm going to go with Cthune, Mage Oxaron, and Priest. Again, I'm going to go with Cthune. Them's my predictions. All right, goodbye for reals this time. You